This is the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football Pregame Show. The winner of today's game between number two, North Dakota State Bison, and the number seven, South Dakota State Jackrabbits will be taking that home. And as always, you can see here, Bison Nation traveled well to Brookings, South Dakota as we get ready to kick off Missouri Valley Conference play. It begins today. It promises to be a very, very physical game. By the way, good afternoon and welcome to the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football Pregame Show. I'm your host, Chris Berg, along with my co-host, Alex Egan. Our analyst, DJ Colt, will be joining us later in the show. And down in Brookings, we've got our very own team, Beth Houle and Brian Sean, giving us up to the minute updates as to what's happening down there. Alex, I got to start with you, man. When you look at today's show, today's game, what's the most important thing people should be focused on? Well, I think uh, coming off the non-conference schedule, that's the, the thing. You go up against three very decent, very good, big sky football teams. You come away with a winning record. You have a winning record coming out of non-conference. Take a look at last game against North Dakota. Two weeks ago, it was a very, very tough game for for NDSU, 34 to nine. Although I guess the uh, score probably doesn't really show the the actual beatdown that occurred in that game, but it was fun for everybody. North Dakota, a very fun game, 34 to nine. You get the win over Weber State in week two, and of course, what a lot of people think is the actual rivalry today at South Dakota State. Of course, you know Northern Iowa coming next week for homecoming a, a team you know a thing or two about uh by the uh, way northern uh, iowa went down today to illinois state 21 to 13 we'll obviously be talking about much more about them next week but as always today a lot of great things to focus on we're going to have coach climbing again right before he hits the field beth will be giving you some updates there uh dj colt and i are going to take you inside the film room i think the big matchup that people are talking about obviously is jake weineke versus cj smith and uh, dj and i will be breaking that dj and cj i might mix those up a few times today <laughs> well, let's see what you can do i'm, I'm not going to give you any credit yet but yeah try and keep those straight today right now though <laughs> let's get you out to brookings and welcome in beth hula she's out with bison nation with our first northland ford dealers tailgate report beth how are we doing down there i found quite a rambunctious group of guys out here tell me a little bit about what you're cooking up out here uh, this is a cajun shrimp boil with shrimp potatoes andouille sausage mushrooms corn on the cob and we also have uh, regular um, boudin if you've known what that is and crawfish boudin which is a rice sausage from louisiana that's quite the spread for a tailgating in a parking lot it is. <laughs> it, we, we do it all the time. So. Yeah, all the time. Well, I've been hanging out in the wrong places. They've even got me dressed up here a little bit. Tell me to me about your crowd and, and how much fun it is to be out here with all your friends here in Brookings. You know, it's a blast. And, uh, you know, Brookings is what? Two and a half hours from Fargo. Uh, but I'm looking around. It doesn't really look like Brookings. It looks like South yeah. Fargo. Yeah. So we'll when, when you prepare for this game, you guys had NDSU versus UND a couple weeks ago, NDSU versus SDSU this week. Which one's a bigger rivalry for you as a fan? For me as a fan, SDSU is in our conference, and no question about it, I would much rather win this game than those guys from up north. Once they can feel the team, we're good to go. Oh. All right, well, fighting words, the gauntlet's been thrown down, guys. I'm going to grab myself some shrimp out here. We'll catch up with you guys a little bit later. There were some fighting words right there. <laughs> a little bit of fighting words, yeah, and uh, the food looks fantastic. Man, we are in the wrong spot, Chris. Yeah, you got to get that gig, man, next year. <laughs> yeah, I, I need to, <laughs> I'm gonna work my way towards getting out to those tailgates. <laughs> All right, be sure and stay with us as we talked about Coach Kleiman coming up. I guess Beth's gonna take off the bison hat and run over to Coach Kleiman <laughs> real quick and get an update from him. Also, we'll take you inside the film room. What does NDSU have to do today to stop this superstar, Jake Winnicky? All that and more coming up right here on the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football Pregame Show. Welcome back to the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football Pregame Show. Joining me now, our analyst, DJ Coulter. Great to have you here, sir. Before you and I start going into the film room and breaking some things down, we want to go back down to Brookings with our very own Beth Hool. She is there with NDSU Bison football coach Chris Kleiman. Get a final update before the Bison take the field. 
Hey, Coach, another two weeks off and, and back on the playing field here. Did you guys make the progress you needed for this matchup today? Well, we'll find out, but uh, we were able to get some guys rested, and uh, we were able to work a little bit more on South Dakota State, and, and probably more importantly, we were be able, able to be on the grass for two weeks, and this is really similar to our practice field, so we'll find out if it's a benefit. Talk about getting some guys some rest. Chase Morlock, I know, had a hurt ankle uh, after the last game against UND. Has he progressed? Did you get the practice reps you needed out of him? Do we see him today? Yeah, we'll see him today. We didn't get as many reps probably as we would have liked, but it's Chase Morlock, and everybody knows how tough he is, and uh, he knows what we're doing offensively. So we'll run him around out here in pregame and, and find out, but uh, he's going to play some. Wineke is obviously somebody that, that you highlight when you prepare for the Jackrabbits this year. What are you guys looking uh, to, to do to protect yourselves against him, and where can he threaten? Well, it's big playability. He's had the big play against everybody. It doesn't matter who they're playing. He's gotten behind everybody, and uh, we've got to do a good job of uh, you're not going to stop the kid. There's just no way he's too good a football player. We just got to limit the big play. You know, if he gets a 20-yard catch, 25-yard catch, uh, and we keep him in front, we, we've done our job. We just got to make sure he doesn't get the 50 to 80-yard catch. Well, best of luck, Coach. Thanks for joining us today. Guys, back to you. Beth, thank you very much. You just heard Beth there calling him Jake Wynicky, which you probably will call him later in the show. I'm calling him Wynicky because the guy is a stud. Six touchdown catches already in just three games. He's got like 26 completions. He is in fuego. The big sort of game in the game today is how is NDSU, and more specifically, C.J. Smith, going to match up here against Jake. We can show you this, uh, the key matchup of the game here. This is obviously the one that many, many people are talking about. We're going to take you inside the film room and say, hey, here's what they need to do to stop him. Plenty of time. Fires deep. Him. He's got a wide open. Cameron Livingston beat the true freshman. And he it takes, takes it in. 68 it to the house. yards for a touchdown. All right, one of the key things here, as you can see, you can kind of see it there, but the, one of the challenges they're going to have uh, with Winicky, obviously, is if you play off him. You see what happens when yeah. guys play off. They end up can go for six on you. So my question to you, I want you to be the NDSU uh, Bison defensive coordinator. I'll be South Dakota State's offensive coordinator. What are you going to do to stop me as Jake? If I'm NDSU's D, co D coordinator, I'm, I want my corner up. I want to play the, play the press man, and I want my hands on that stud receiver as much as possible because that doesn't let him get off the line of scrimmage as fast get those big plays i might need some help over the top of the safety this is a great this is a top five receiver in fcs so that expect cj to stay with him one-on-one -on -one all day might be tough but i want my hands on him as much as possible so when he releases i can if he gets by me i got safety over the top and this who has to do that today breaks up the time and the whole thing two quick things i'll share with you if i'm south dakota state one is i'm going to put myself or at least Winicky in the slot position. That's going to be between the tackle and obviously the outside wide receiver. Now it gives me some space here to work with. The other thing Coach Klein has talked a lot about this week is, hey, we're going to change up our schemes, obviously, so they don't know how we're going to defend him because a lot of guys are playing man against him. What I would say is start putting Winicky in motion. What that does, it gives the quarterback a pre-snap read, lets him know, hey, is it man, is it zone? They're going to know that ahead of time and obviously how they want to then uh, go against the scheme that NDSU is going to pose against Winicky. Is this going to be a winning combination today or not? NDSU has to limit the big plays. I'm sure all week they were focusing, how can we make sure we have one to two guys on Winicky all day? Great stuff, great stuff. All right, much more coming up here on the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football Pregame Show. Stay right where you're at. South Dakota ahead of South Dakota State and North Dakota State. Many are calling the rivalry a top 10 matchup. We are excited for it today. Hoping for him to have a giant, giant game. Welcome back to the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show. Several Bison players have got experience in winning at football. One in particular has developed his skills in a different arena. Yeah, Lee Timmerman made the trek to Dickinson, North Dakota to catch up with the Jordheim family and found out they are no family to mess with. My name is Brent Jordheim. I'm a 7th degree black belt in Taekwondo. My name is Lori Jordheim and I'm a 6th degree black belt in Taekwondo. A Levi Jordheim, uh, third stripe on my black belt. And that's not counting the first black belt Levi wore at two and a half weeks old. 
He actually started Taekwondo when he was five. It took about two years to get to the black belt, uh, but uh, going through those belts is sure fun, you know. Levi was able to go through those belts so quickly because his parents taught martial arts for 24 years. It's just different from what other kids do, you know. Kids are doing soccer and football. I was doing all that, but on top of that, I was doing Taekwondo, and that was just... It was good as a kid. The kid is now a redshirt freshman linebacker for the Bison. It's the only place he wanted to play. As a North Dakota kid, that's just awesome. I mean, being able to, growing up and seeing the Bison and then seeing that first championship and just being able to now put a helmet on is just awesome. I told Coach Hens, I said one thing I like about Levi is, is his work ethic. And, you know, we've trained hundreds and hundreds of Taekwondo students, and, and his work ethic is just uh, you know, 120%, he gives it all. When he wants something, he goes and gets it, and that's what it takes to be a bison, I think. That's why he's successful in the program, hopefully. And Levi's impact on the program is just beginning to be felt. It's going to be so exciting to watch him, and, you know, we understand that it's a long road, and he has to keep working, and he has to, um, you know, put his 110% in every single day, um, and we know he can do that. It's going to be so fun to watch him in these next few years. <laughs> And you can catch more stories like this one tomorrow on the Bison Football Show with head coach Chris Kleiman. Coach will be breaking down today's game. The show airs tomorrow at 10.30 on KVLY this week. That's a change from normal. And then again on Valley News Live, 10 at 10 on, on KVLY. Again, tomorrow at 10.30 on KVLY, not on KX4. We've got some NFL football that will be bumping the show over to KVLY. The Bison Football Show with Chris Kleiman. And, uh, you know, you, you never know what you're going to see out of some of these players. Who I was just going to say, look out. Like, easy. All right. Come on now. All right. Stay, come on. stay with us. When we come back, we're going to be breaking down if South Dakota is going to pull the upset today. What do they have to do? We're going to hear from our analyst, DJ Coulter, right after this. You got to prepare for them the same way. Um, it's been the same, same same thing for the last six times. I think we've we've played them, and they they uh, they know they know us pretty well too. But you know, it does take a little bit out of their running game. But you know, they know how to replace guys just like we do. So we got to prepare for them just the same. MJ Stump there talking about Zach Zenner gone to the NFL from South Dakota State's teams. Welcome back inside the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show. Let's get you back out to Brookings and catch up with uh, Beth, who is standing by with somebody from South Dakota State to get their perspective on the game. Beth? Hey, guys, I'm here with Tyler Merriam, the play-by-play -play guy for South Dakota State here. As you guys have prepared for this game, what have you seen from the Jackrabbits already this season? Well, we've seen uh, some tremendous offensive play, particularly from Jake Winicky. I mean, obviously a freshman All-American and what he's done. I know Chris Kleiman spent a lot of time on him on the press conference last Monday with what he's done offensively. I mean, again, the Jacks are, are 3-0. and They've done a lot of good things. They haven't been perfect. They need to play much better tonight than they did last week, but uh, uh, certainly going into conference play they're playing as well as anybody right now where do you see this game being won uh, between these two well I think anytime these two teams have gotten together we've seen penalties and turnovers be such huge factors and in big games that typically is what comes up and I think those are big things and the other thing is is how the two defenses take on the best player of the opposition without Crockett anymore certainly Carson Wentz is running is a huge focus of the Jackrabbit defense what wrinkle will they throw at him and on the other side you know the Bison spent so much time on Zenner in the past now they're focusing on Jake Winicky. what will they do different than the three non-conference foes did and the adjustments from there that game within the game that's so much fun to see. Well, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Good luck to you today on your call. And guys, we'll toss it back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Beth. Some very interesting thoughts there as we get into this game. South Dakota State obviously has a great offense. And we know all about uh, Jake Winicky and, and what he can do. And we, we've seen what Carson Wentz can do. Guys, let's get it back over to you. Well, DJ, there you have it. I think it is Winicky and not Winicky. But besides that, let's talk about obviously what SDSU needs to do to win this football game. In my opinion, I think it'd be a, not a huge upset, but definitely an upset. Before we get your uh, sort of analysis on all this, I want to bring up a quick graphic. This is kind of the tail of the tape uh, through 2015. And these are some pretty shocking stats. Uh, about what's happened so far in the first three games of 2015. Uh, maybe we have that 
And if we don't, let me know if we bring that up. But for you, uh, what do you think needs to happen for South Dakota State in order to win this football game? Well, Chris, South Dakota State is by far, here's the, it's the graphs up right now, and you can see it's pretty balanced. South Dakota State is the most balanced offense, and they're explosive. They have two good young running backs. Um, they have a great, obviously a fantastic receiver. The quarterback can get the ball out. Last game, they didn't run the ball, but they threw for 400 yards. They're a team that can try to get at you with the run and the pass. Maybe it's something that different in the last few games. We just didn't see that from the opponent's offense. So the, from a defensive line perspective, and here you can see these, these uh, stats, which I think are pretty stunning. Average points per game, South Dakota State wins. Opponents' points, again, South Dakota State's wins. They've, they've held their opponents to less points. Fumbles, turnovers, a very, very key thing. They have not lost one fumble, although Lujan, who calls himself the Gaucho Gunslinger, has thrown two Whoa. picks. Carson Wentz has not. So uh, turnovers, could that be the name of the game today? It could be. You know, you got to remember the way I look at this game. When, when the, uh, the NDSU had a tough time with the Grizz offense, they were able to run the ball a little bit. If South Dakota State gets running the ball, is the DBs for NDSU going to be looking up? We saw in that highlight when we had broke down that play. C.J. Smith caught, got caught with his eyes up trying to play the run. South North Dakota State DBs need to be focused on playing the pass. Let the front seven make the plays. The back four, the safeties and corners, protect the pass. And I think it goes back to what you said. they got to get their hands on Winnicky and the receivers in order to break up sort of the timing of the offense and also give them a chance to kind of sneak a peek yeah. in the backfield, know if it's pass or run. Great job. Thank you very much, sir. All right, stay with us when we come back. Much more coming up right here on the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football Pregame Show. Welcome back inside the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show. A lot's been made about South Dakota State's new stadium. They're getting a new surface. A lot of renovations are going down. They are getting a new surface out there, but they're still playing on the old grass that they have. And a lot of teams use that stadium. So injuries could be a big thing today with the turf being in a pretty rough shape from what we've heard from our folks down there in Brookings. Let's get you back out to Brookings and catch up with Beth, who is standing by with Dr. Mer Benjamin Noonan. Beth. Hey guys, welcome back with your Sanford Orthopedic Sports Medicine Injury Report. I'm joined by Dr. Noonan today here in Brookings, South Dakota. Out here at SDSU, they're playing on a grass field surface. Is there any difference, any heightened ex or opportunity for injuries when you're changing up the surface like this? Well, that's a good question. I mean, actually, grass has been shown to be a little more forgiving on injuries, most notably ankle injuries. We see a heightened incidence of that, especially with the older turf. The newer turf that we have doesn't seem to be as bad. But on the flip side, the equipment guys really have to be on their game because especially as the grass conditions go down, guys might have issues with um, losing their footing and then you can get some injuries attributed to that. Do you put any heightened emphasis on those guys that maybe have already pre-existing ankle injuries or things like that? Yeah, I mean, certainly. You know, we remind them of that and, you know, especially, again, the footwear and making sure that they're aware of it and then just the protective taping and bracing that we do. Is there anything you guys can look for uh, when you're watching the guys out there on the field with some different conditions? I mean, I think the biggest thing is just having lines of communication open between us and the trainers and the athletes. And the athlete can tell us if they're starting to get into trouble and then we have to kind of react and respond to that. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Noonan. We appreciate it. That's another Sanford Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Injury Report. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Beth. And as expected, as we get into the season, the list of names on the Sanford Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Injury Report is going to grow. Let's take a look at it right now. Chase Morlock, as we heard on Monday from head coach Chris Kleiman, was a limited participant in practice all week. He is expected to go today, but he was limited. Tight end Luke Albers is questionable with a knee injury. Sophomore D-tackle Grant Morgan is, quote, very questionable with an ankle injury. Jalen Wimbush is coming back off a concussion, but he is expected to play today. And Pierre G. Tucker fighting flu-like symptoms, but he should be good to go. And obviously, when you're playing on a surface like that, the questions for those ankle injuries and for those knee injuries, you're really going to have to think about those. Let's get you back out to Beth, who has made her way Back to the fun outside the stadium with more tailgaters. Beth, she has our Northland Ford dealers tailgate report. Beth. 
Hey guys, I'm joined by Monty and Leanne. Now you'll notice a jackrabbit and a bison both on each of their shirts here. Uh, a house divided, you could say. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you end up with a jackrabbit as a wife? Well, we're both from North Dakota originally, and when we moved to Brookings, uh, she decided to cheer for the jackrabbits, and I still follow the bison. You, tra you traded sides on us, Leanne. You traded sides. I still went to Fargo every home game and cheered on while we were winning those national championship titles. I was there. I wore green. <laughs> but you're in blue today, huh? I have a son that attends SDSU, so I am proud of him. I support him fully. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Now, I understand you also have a son who's looking at NDSU, though. Are you going to win one of these, Monty? Uh, <laughs> yes, because my youngest son, he's in for the bison, trust me. <laughs> he's here. He's got a bison shirt on right there. <laughs> that's what there we are. like that's to hear. That's my two sons right there. <laughs> A house divided even further. How about it? Well, best of luck to you guys today. I hope you have a fun thing riding on this one. Uh, guys, we'll toss it back to you guys. Have a good time up there. All right. Thank you very much, Beth. Yeah, a couple houses divided. We saw that last uh, two weeks ago, rather, with North Dakota and North Dakota State meeting up on the gridiron for the first time in forever. Let's take a live look out at uh, Brookings at the stadium there. We see the teams getting ready to warm up. North Dakota State wearing the road whites. They are 0-1 in this uniform. Of course, the last time they wore this was back in August, August 29th, when they went out to the University of Montana and uh, came back with a loss to open up the season. We can see the teams getting ready to go there. It looks like Easton Stick warming up for the Bison as they prepare to take on South Dakota State. It's a top 10 matchup. We are certainly excited for it, as are the teams as they are getting ready to get this one going from Brookings, South Dakota. What an exciting time. Missouri Valley Football Conference is getting underway all around the nation today as well. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to catch up with a former Bison player who was just in the region last week, and he met up with some of his former teammates. Welcome back to the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football pregame show. What are you laughing at, man? Last uh, weekend, the Bison didn't play, so it opened up an opportunity for them to catch some NFL games. Fortunately for us, Alex this week has got the inside look. Yeah, it was perfect last weekend. The Bison coming off a big win over an in-state rival, and then they had a bye week, which meant a Sunday off, and playing for the first time in the region since being drafted into the NFL, Kyle Emanuel and his new team, we're in Minneapolis to take on the Vikings. We had a chance to meet up with the players to see that once a bison, always a bison, isn't just a saying. There was a wide range. It was, uh, you know, former teammates, family, friends uh, from back home, from Fargo, uh, kind of kind of uh, all over the place. Most rookies don't get a big contingent following them around, but Bison Nation traveled in good numbers to go watch their former defensive star now get it done on the pro level. And obviously Kyle was a big part of my life the past couple of years, so I'm glad I can come support him while he's here. And it's so close that it's cool that we had a bye week where we could come help him out. It's exciting. I mean, practicing against him uh, all day, every day, the last couple of years, see him out uh, doing it professionally, it's a big, big step. And I heard a lot of, uh, heard a lot of go Bison, so uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Former teammates and friends made the journey to Minneapolis, and they had the opportunity to catch up with Kyle after the game. And he's proving to still be an inspiration, even though he's no longer in the same locker room. Obviously, no one's going to be Kyle Emanuel, but try, obviously everyone's trying to make it to the next level. But I'm hoping I can just help my team win and help me be a better Bison first. And Kyle says his nerves of playing in the same stadium where his Bison knocked off the University of Minnesota in 2011 were about the same ahead of playing the game against the Minnesota Vikings. It's it's still football. It's 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 still a, a football game. Um, this is you know a little bit bigger level and. Um, you know, you're a pro now, but other than that, no, it's about the same. Proving it's more than just a game. It has the power to bring people back together.
Well, that was a lot of fun to go down to Minneapolis and catch up with the guys. I know they were a, a lot of them were excited, and of course they were torn because several are Vikings fans growing up in this region, and then Kyle playing for the San Diego Chargers, a team that was trying to knock off the Vikings that day. Uh, there was a lot of mixed emotion out in front of the stadium. Ahead the only of the thing game. I want to—I don't care—I want to know how you got that gig. That was, I mean, what a chance. Well, I mean, you know, not all of us can uh, <laughs> go down and cover the NFL every once in a while. You know, we have, I don't get to go to the Bison games on Saturday, so dang it, I'm going to You're a going Vikings down game. to the Sunday game. Game. Sorry, Sorry, to go to a Vikings game. How yeah. amped is Kyle Manuel playing in the NFL in San Diego? I mean, one of the best cities, obviously, yeah, right? out there in the country. But so inspiring, too, for the guys that went down there with him to go say, hey, if he can do it, I can do it. I think we see that, obviously, in Carson Wentz probably playing on Sundays as well yeah and i think we're going to see joe Haig playing on sundays as well coming up and there's several guys in that are in the nfl and they're all inspirations to the guys that are on the team and obviously kyle was good friends with brad ambrosia said i caught up with he was a good friend to everybody that was on the team that that was there and, and they were there supporting him and uh, as he heard you could hear the go bison in the stands and and people saying you know letting him know that bison nation was there and and you know kyle he didn't play all that much he's still a rookie uh he had a chance at adrian peterson on uh, his 43 yard touchdown run but Kyle's still a rookie. But he's been balling this year. I mean, the guy's got <laughs> yeah, an INT, right. he's yeah. got a sack, so he's been having, obviously, an outstanding season as a rook. And many of the guys, you know, heard about Philip Rivers saying, that the guy doesn't look like a fifth-round draft pick. This no, guy yeah. a first-rounder. So he's been having a great camp, obviously, down in San Diego. And before you, you, we move on here, you oh, know, tomorrow. Kind of yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> before we move on, I've been working out. Uh, before we move on, uh, you get a chance to see a couple more uh, former Bison that are in the NFL. They're playing overseas. You know, Miami Dolphins are playing uh, the New York Jets tomorrow. So you got a chance to catch, you know, Marcus Williams. Williams playing for the uh, the New York Jets now, I believe. Huh? Don't quote me on that. And Billy Turner Black as asleep. well playing yes. for the Dolphins. So it would be great. You can go between that game and obviously Coach Kleiman's coaches show, uh, which would be on KBOY. Yes. The yeah. game in London will be on CBS. So it's it's a football heaven, if you will, football fantasy. We want to take you back out to the stadium down there in Brookings. Uh, guys are probably still getting warmed up there and getting ready for this first Missouri Valley Conference game. A new stadium as well. And one of the things that we're going to be talking about when we come back, we're going to start to be breaking down the game. But I actually saw the field uh, probably about an hour or so ago. Did not look like it was in good condition. And well, we want to talk about how is that going to play into today's outcome. And just to give you a little preview, this field, uh, obviously, it's natural grass. Not too many natural grass uh, stadiums left in FCS football and really in any of football. But, yeah, the grass is not in great shape. We heard from Beth. It's it's not, not very good right now. You can see Bison Nation filtering into uh, – Take the yellow into the blue there, as, although I guess both teams have a little bit of yellow in them. But Bison Nation's green and gold is a little bit sweeter than the other, the other yellow. So when we come back, you're going to hear from Brian Sean, what he believes are the keys to the game. Obviously, Alex, you're going to hear from Beth Houle, her keys to the game, my keys to the game. Even DJ might throw some keys into the game <laughs> if he's still around. So stay with us. It should be a great physical matchup to kick off the His Missouri be wrong, Valley you, yeah, Conference. Be wrong. At least I'm going to say <laughs> Winnicky right, right? So stay with us. We'll be right back. pretty good you know I was one of the first few people to run over there last year and fortunately Mike Hardy and Kyle stole it from me but in the locker room I got a chance to hold it it was pretty felt pretty good Austin obviously has needs to have a big game today to protect Carson Wentz and get that run game going again here's Bison Nation filing into the stadium in Brookings South Dakota we are less than 14 minutes away from game time. We will walk you up to that. Welcome back to the Farmers Union Insurance Bison Football Pregame Show. I'm your host, Chris Berg, along with DJ Coulter and Alex Egan. We want to take you back down to Brookings real quickly. Uh, one of our team members obviously does the play-by-play -play for us regularly. Brian Sean is down in Brookings. We want to hear from Mr. Sean his keys to the game. What's it going to take for NDSU to pull off the W today? Brian, what do you have for us, sir? Hey guys, yeah, everybody all week has been talking about the Bison skill players against the South Dakota State skill players. But at the end of the day, it's really going to come down to what happens in the trenches. Can South Dakota State's offensive line move the Bison defensive line, who are playing very well right now, in particular at nose tackle with Nate Tangway? On the other side of the football, can NDSU's offensive line continue to get the movement they've got and getting Jack Plankers back on the line of scrimmage against a South Dakota State Jackrabbit defensive line that is giving up over 200 yards a game rushing. So to me, this game is going to be won and lost up front, and the skill players are just to complement those other guys. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Brian. And obviously, there are several keys to this game, and I have uh, selected two of them. If we could take a look at my keys to the game, and it's, uh, well... 
turn the turnovers into points. North Dakota State has yet to score off of a turnover. They've created a, a bunch of them this season, but they've yet to turn any of them into points. And we've heard Coach Kleiman say all along that you're going to have to turn these turnovers into points. You need to take advantage of them and flex your muscles. I think uh, this game is going to be one, as Brian Sean said, they're in the trenches, and I think uh, you're going to have to flex your muscles if you want to win this game. The team that goes out and flexes their muscle and imposes their will on the other team will be the one that will be most successful. Let's go back out to Brookings and get Beth's final thoughts on this game. Hey, Beth. Hey guys, that's fine and great. Everybody's talking about how great Weineke is and how the Bison secondary is going to have to step up. But what about SDSU secondary? They're playing true freshmen. Their safeties have been exposed in these first three weeks that they've played. How can the Bison attack there and win the game there? I want to see Raw. I want to see Erzendowski. I want to see numbers. I want to see tight ends get in on this. That's where I think the Bison can win this game. That balanced attack, but expose that SDSU secondary for just how young they are. Chris Berg, I know this is hard for you to hear. I know you love to talk about Weineke, but uh, what do you think, huh? Well, <laughs> I think he's going to have a game today because it's Weineke and he is winning this season. Again, the guy's got six touchdown catches this year, 20 plus receptions. This isn't just three games. The guy is balling up and down. I know that's been a ton of great teams, but hey, Kansas FBS squad, obviously he's doing something there. He's legit. Now the key is going to be who else is going to step up for them. If the Bison shut him down, can someone else beat the Bison defense? And I think you must be loving uh, B. Sean's keys of the game, talking about the guys in the trenches, obviously where DJ used to live. So giving you guys some love, which is going to be important for today's game. But let's take a look at your keys of the game, what DJ thinks. Hey, this is what's important for obviously NDSU to win. Well, the Bison call their offensive line the Rams. And if you look at the stats, South Dakota State defensively has given up over five yards a carry. If that happens today and the Rams get going and become Ram tough, this is going to be NDSU <laughs> at the end of the game with a big smile on their face. Also, defensively, make Wineke, Wineke, whatever his name is, wine. Make him wine. Hit him off like I talked earlier about jamming and blind scrimmage. I want a safety to light him up over the middle. Make sure he feels it that the Bison defensive backfield is ready to play today. What are you doing, a Dodge truck ad here? Ram tough? Or hey. what's going on here? Just trying to get everyone <laughs> fired up. Hey, look at this, Chris. We got possibly the, the championship. I know it's early in the season, but South Dakota State might be, and NDSU might be the two best teams in the conference. How, I mean, it's close to a rivalry as we've seen. Let's see what, what happens today. You know, B Brian Sean talked about being in the trenches, and so I want to get a, a thought from you, and I'll share my thoughts. But I saw this field earlier. There are parts of this field, again, grass field. Um, they've had decent weather, but it, there was parts that looked like a cow pasture. Talk about being in the trenches and how that can impact your performance. You, you better get your footing. I remember playing a lot of games that you might have to switch out your you know shoes throughout the game. Um, the, sometimes the equipment guy might be the most important part, part person there to say hey we need to switch stuff up on our end but at the end of the day everyone out there everyone plays on the same field it's still football strap it up see who's going to be the, the champion because this could this could lead to it for the end of the season let's show you a quick live shot again here down in brookings at the stadium obviously you cannot see it from this distance but trust me i saw some close-up shots there were some areas where there was i mean there was potholes there's dirt so how is that going to play for the skill guys the wide receivers obviously carson wentz runs the rock a lot it could definitely have an impact if they don't have the right cleats on. Hopefully they got out there early, gave their cleats a chance to test them out and see, hey, this is the size cleat that I'm going to need to perform at my best in today's game. Speaking about performing at your best, I want to bring up what I believe are the keys to the game today. And I came up with three of them. I don't know why, but I just felt like, hey, three is always a good thing. Number one, Bison need a fast start. I think if we've watched the Bison over the past few years, they've not always come out of the gates fast. This game is away. The SDSU crowd is going to be on fire. Remember last year's game? They thought they had that game won. They ended up losing with 54 seconds left. If Bison can take the home crowd out of the game early, that obviously will be a good thing. Luan, that's the quarterback for South Dakota State. He actually has a Twitter handle, at Gaucho Gunslinger. The guy Ooh. thinks he can toss the rock. But I think what needs to happen today is the guy in the trenches have got to give Luan happy feet. That you got Tangway and those guys, they've got to hit him hard and hit him often. Even if he doesn't have the rock, which you got to do, even if he gets rid of it. And DJ, you know this. That's we'll come back to him in the dream. third one. Yeah. This is their dream. Pin your, pin your ears back and get after the quarterback. This is what you want to see. So talk, walk me through. I'm obviously the defensive coordinator. I don't want any cheap shots. I don't want any penalties. But how do I get through to my defensive guys, my blitzing linebackers? Hey, if you got a shot, ring his bell. Well, you can, you, you can hit him. 
doesn't mean you can't hit him, but as soon as he throws the ball, you got to lay off. But every time he's in the motion of th throwing the ball, hit him and make sure he knows at the front four. And maybe, you know, blitz and a blitz here or there doesn't hurt. I mean, the way the Bison blitz with that, their outside backers and middle linebacker can be effective, so watch for that out there. They, if they start, if SDSU starts moving the ball, the Bison might bring a blitz in to help offset that. Beep. There goes Luan. Pick up the phone, Luan. All right, let's get to my third key of the game because this is one that no one's been talking about. But let me just remind you what happened against Weber State. Obviously, they returned a kickoff for six. They took it to the house. Bring up my graphic, please, for the keys of the game again. And then also, if you remember UND, they had a lot of big plays on punt returns. So it's very, very important that NDSU wins the special teams today. There's been some holes there, and I just want to let you know this. South Dakota State, J. Ryan Butler, he is a stud punt returner, preseason all-conference Missouri Valley. So this kid, he gets the rock in his hands. He might dance and take it to the house as well. The one thing to offset that, don't forget NDSU has a stud punter, maybe the best punter in FCS. So that'll be a great matchup. Good point, Chris. All I know is UND has some nice punt returns against them. And again, Weber State took it to the house on a kickoff return. So I, I bet LeComp gets coached up on that. No worries Just about watch it. that facet of the game. All right, we want to take you over back over to Alex and get our Bobcat heavy lifting report. Alex, what are you looking at for us, sir? Hey, guys, plenty of guys to pick for this one, but we're going to focus on the defensive line for NDSU, and it's going to be Nate Tangway, who, uh, as we heard from Brian Sean, is going to be poised to have himself a big game. You guys are talking about Lujan having the happy feet there, Chris. Well, Tangway, he's, he's made an impact through three games. He's got 19 total tackles, just the one tackle for loss and a half sack. But he's a guy that's on the D-line that's going to have to make a difference and force Lujan into having that happy feet that you're talking about if the Bison want to be successful. So he, Nate Tangway, is our Bison heavy lifting, our Bobcat heavy lifting report player. Guys? Thank you very much, Alex. Can Tangway pull this off? Tangway's turned into a special, what they call three technique in the Tampa 2 defense. And, you know, NDSU's had a nice run of great defensive tackles. Tangway's filling there. And just remember, he's young. This Bison D line is young. I'm excited for this DN to start getting after it. I think we might see that in this game. They're going to get a lot of opportunities against the pass today. Now, one thing to note, NDSU has won seven straight games against SDSU. By the way, we are now down to five minutes till game time. We're going to walk you right up to the game time. But seven straight W's. And when you go around town and you talk to people and say, hey, what's been the difference in those seven wins? Most people are going to say, you know what? The one thing that NDSU's had that SDSU hasn't is a great quarterback. So what we want to do today is take it a look at a little QB comparison for you because again, the Gaucho Gunslinger is definitely slinging the rock really, really well in the first three. Just wait till you see these stats, my friend. First, let's break down. I believe this might be the Gaucho Gunslinger. First, I want to take a look at here and share with you a couple things that really jump out about Zach Luan, and that is this. Passing yards in the first three games. One of the things you want to note, everyone around town here is going nuts because Carson Wentz has got about 740 passing yards in the first three games you got your gaucho gunslinger there over a thousand and three games dj uh, you know i think NDSU. you don't still sound impressed a, man hey, is this guy a great young quarterback yes I'll, I'll still take carson any day over this and just in the sense that i think carson's a little more all-around qb carson still has the running part to his game that makes NDSU's offense tick um we'll see if they get after zach is he immobile enough to get away from the four D linemen get. I think out. he likes Gaucho Gunslinger. One of the key things about the, the Gaucho Gunslinger is this. He has thrown two picks this year, so he may be apt to turn the ball over, obviously against NDSU's code green defense. Now let's take a look at Carson Wentz. We all know how well he's performed first the th for, through the first three games of the season. You can see it here, 741 passing yards. That is second only to Mr. Walker. I think he had like 750-some all-time NDSU in the first three games, which I only share that because I think it shows again how many yards the Gaucho Gunslinger has been uh, tossing the pill around the field to make it up there. The big stat that jumps out to me, and I want both of you guys to comment on this, you got to look at the touchdown-interception ratio. One of the things that I think has made the Bison so successful in this national championship run is they don't make dumb mistakes. When I see a QB with zero INTs in the first three games, I say, hey, man, great job taking care of the ball. DJ? I hope NDSU fans are enjoying Carson as a player because he brings every Saturday brings something to the table with his either his passing, his running. He reads defenses so well. 
gets that ball out to that uh, either receiver or running back out of the backfield. I love his leadership for the Bison Nation. Alex, your thoughts? Well, I think we, the Bison fans have been spoiled. I mean, you have Brock Jensen, yeah. and then you, you come in with Carson Wentz to follow that up. I think, you know, Bison, Bison fans, they are used to seeing good quarterback yeah. play. So it's no surprise that Carson is doing as well as he is. I mean, he stepped into playing his first season as a starter since he was a senior in high school and goes and wins a national championship last year. So it's no no surprise that he picked up right where he left off. But the one thing, if you do want to pull on negative on Carson Wentz, which I'm sure Bison Nation doesn't want to hear, he has fumbled the ball a few times, and he needs to learn how to take a sack. If yeah. he learns how to take a sack, we're not talking about a bum ankle injury from week one, but he has recovered from that. But we're not talking about that as we get down to two minutes to go before. Or even just time. throw the thing away. I mean, yeah. get outside yeah. the tackle box, just throw this thing away. One interesting side note, I believe this is true. I heard of this this week. Coach Stieg, actually the coach at SDSU, you know who he coached? Carson Wentz's dad. Which is kind of an interesting little side note. Yes, sir. I actually heard SDSU, they, they try to recruit pretty well in, in the state of North Dakota. They do pretty well in the state of South Dakota. But they offered, I believe they were one of the first schools to offer Carson Wentz yeah. uh, a scholarship coming out of high school there in Bismarck. So uh, NDSU won out on that. Well, they went out on it today. All right, we're just under 90 seconds here until <laughs> game time. i got to put the pressure on you guys. i got to get some final predictions. Alex, I'm starting with you first. What's going to be the score today? Yeah, boy, I think it's going to be a grind-out game. I think the field is going to play a big issue in it. And I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a key player get get taken out with an injury uh, I say the bison probably come away with this one but I say it's gonna be by a touchdown or less 17 to 10 not a high scoring affair Wow yeah, I think the bison offense is gonna get rolling especially if they average over five yards a carry like South Dakota State's defense been given up I think it'll be something like 34 21 bison I like that man you're putting some points on the board as a quarterback <laughs> that's what I want to see my man the gaucho gunslinger is gonna be slinging around wow. all over the field but but he will throw a pick or two today, but also your man Winnicky will have a couple of touchdown catches. I'm going to go with 34-28. The Bison pull out oh, the victory. Shocker, shocker. Yes. I thought you were Bring the horns up. SDSU. We know that's what's going to happen. No, I'm not going to say SDSU. <laughs> it's going to be a ginormous win and obviously a giant win in the Missouri wow. Valley Conference. As you alluded to, this literally could potentially be the Missouri conference Valley Conference Conference Championship be. game because then next week, it doesn't get any easier. You got you and I coming into the Dome. That will be a battle as well. Alex, I got 10 seconds left. Going to give you the last word, sir. Well, I think what, what we're going to see today is, is a great game. And you're going to see two top 10 matchup, a top 10 team on both sides, put, giving their all out there. Great. Alex Deegan, DJ Coulter, I'm Chris Berg. Let's take you down to Brookings for game.